3D modeling, boo, everything else. Let's do it. Today, we are going to produce this brazier. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. So, what we have here is the finished product. It's a brazier, similar to the one that we just saw outside. <laughs> so, what it's made up of is a number of bands. So, four bands in the axial direction. And then these vertical members, which are made up of an upper arm and a lower arm here. Now, an interesting quality of each of one of these components is that they're not just solid models like we've dealt with in the past. If we come along here and click open, if we grab one of these components, what we can do is we can define a flat side, uh, define the A side, and we can set them to flat pattern. What this means is that we can cut it out with a laser beam, and then we can put it into a brake press and fold it into shape. Very, very efficient to make uh, components with this approach. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. Let's see how we can make this using sheet metal components in Autodesk Inventor. Cool. All right, so I'll minimize that and we'll get started in a similar way that we usually do. We'll come along here and say new. And this time, instead of choosing standard millimeter part, we're gonna come over here and choose sheet metal millimeter. Now they are interchangeable in a way, but if you go ahead and create a sheet metal part, uh, we've got access to all the sheet metal tools of Inventor. Now, before we get started, the most important button in sheet metal is sheet metal defaults. What this does is it allows us to set the material and also the thickness of the sheet metal. This affects how the whole thing unfolds and bends and what corner release that we are using. Yeah, it's a rich tapestry, you'll see. So we'll come along here and unclick uh, thickness from rule. And for thickness, we'll choose 1.5 mil. And for the material, we'll come along and we'll choose steel, comma, mild. Looking good. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is create this top band here. And we'll quickly observe what it involves. We've got a band, it's got 16 holes patterned around. Um, and uh, it's also got this gap, which will allow it to unfold. Now this gap, if you'll notice, is at a slight angle to the rest of the body. This is going to be very pivotable, uh, pivotal for a reason that we'll see. So we'll go back to our sheet metal part. And we want to make the band. Now, the way that we're going to do it is we're going to make a profile and we're going to sweep it around an axis. Um, so it's called a contour roll and it's the sheet metal equivalent of a revolution in solid modeling. We'll come along here, start 2D sketch and make a sketch on the XY plane. Come along here and pick a line. And this is going to represent our radius. So the diameter of the top band is 405 millimeters. So we'll say 405 over two. And for good measure, make it construction. We're also going to make a vertical line, which is going to represent the cross section of our sheet metal band. And we're going to use a coincident constraint to connect its middle to the end of that line there. Beautiful, good. Okay, uh, and we'll also specify a thickness, uh, well, a height for it. We'll say it's 27 millimeters tall. Cool. Click finish sketch. And now we're going to double check our sheet metal defaults. Yep, 1.5 millimeter, good stuff. Let's go and click contour roll. Now contour roll by default, it will pick up any profile that it can. And so we've only got one profile there, so let's pick it up. For the axis, what we're going to do is we're going to expand our origin and specify the Y axis. Good. For the rolled angle, we could put in say 90 degrees and it'll cover a 90 degree span. But in this case, we're gonna do 359 which will leave a one degree gap there. Now we're gonna leave it the way that it is, but it's got a floor and we'll see the floor shortly. So what we've got is the requirement to create 16 holes around. So let's go ahead and do that. Now remember when dealing in CAD, laziness is key. So we're going to create a single hole and then we're going to use the pattern command to create. So we'll say point in the middle here and we're going to use the hole feature to place a four millimeter simple hole, starting from the point and ending at the end of the band. Looking good, looking good. Okay, now rather than creating work plane and another hole and work plane, another hole, work plane, another hole, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the rectangular, uh, circular pattern to uh, pattern that hole around. So we'll choose the hole. For the rotational axis, we can pick the Y axis or the center, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to place down 16 units and click OK. Now, 
for the most part, it's looking good until we get to the gap. We can see that the gap happens to coincide with one of the holes, which won't be good. So what we're going to do is change it in the laziest way we can. Let's bring the end of folded up before circular pattern and before the hole. So we've got just the original contour roll. Now, what I want to do is I want to rotate it around its central axis. So to do that, we'll come along here and click 3D model, and we'll come to the direct tool. Now direct is a, a bag of cats. It's really crazy in the things that it can do. Um, we can move, size, scale, rotate, delete. This is faces and solids. Um, I'll choose to rotate and change it from faces to solids. Pick the entire band, and it's by default chosen the um, the local coordinate system, uh, the global coordinate system, which is fine for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to rotate it around this axis. How far it's going to be it happens to be 22.5 degrees over 2. So there we go. I'm just going to quickly undo and redo it so you can see it move. There we go. And now I'm going to bring my end of folded back down. So our hole and hole pattern returns. Ooh, very nice, very nice. So now we can see that the gap isn't impinging on there. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go ahead and save that as band one. Now, to be efficient, what we're going to do is we're gonna notice that there are a couple of other bands that are pretty much exactly the same. We've got this upper band here, we've got a middle band here, a lower band here, and then the foot band at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to make copies of this original band and make alterations to the parameters so that they're the right size. So we'll come along here to file and we'll say save as, and we'll save this one as band two. It might look like we've still got the same file open, but it's a whole new file. Um, just as a nice little bit of trivia, if you come to the eye properties, you'll find that the part number has been updated to whatever you saved it as which doesn't happen when you copy it in Windows Explorer, so beware. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll come to the contour roll sketch and we're going to change this one's diameter. So we happen to know that the diameter is 335, so we'll say 335 over two. And there we go, that'll do. Repeat the process again, file, save as, band three. Come to the contour roll sketch. And we'll say 225 over two, looking good. Save that. So this represents our upper, middle, and lower band. Now this bottom band, my original model actually has a floor in it. It doesn't actually have 16 holes along the bottom. It's actually only got four. So we're going to keep that in mind when we create it. That's right, we're gonna make it bigger, stronger, better. We'll say save as, band four. Good stuff. And we'll come along to our contour roll. And we're going to change the diameter from 225 back to 335. Good. And importantly, we're going to change the number of holes in the pattern from 16 to 4. Looking good, looking good. Excellent. Cool. All right, go ahead and save that. And we'll close it down. So, so far, what we've achieved is we've created these four bands. What we want to do next are create one of these vertical arms. So as you can see, the vertical arm starts on the outside of the upper band and then goes along the inside of the band there, comes down inside of the third band, and then a fourth leg, uh, the lower leg connects to the outside of that band and to the bottom there. Beautiful. So it looks complicated, but trust me, it's not. We'll go ahead and create a new standard millimeter, oh no, sheet metal, sheet metal millimeter part. Too many times I say standard millimeter. Okay, now go ahead and we'll click start a 2D sketch and we'll create this one on the XY plane. And this time we're going to take a slightly different approach. What we're going to do is we're going to make a construction sketch that's going to represent the cross section of the brazier in a kind of a plan. So we'll come along here, create a line from the origin and we'll make it so that it's 570 mils tall, which happens to be the height of the brazier. And what we're going to do here is create a bunch of rectangles and these rectangles are going to represent the bands. So they're all different sizes and we'll put in the proper dimensions very shortly, but we'll make an equals, an equals constraint so that they're all the same size. Good, good. Okay, they're 27 tall and 
this top one happens to be 405 over 2 in radius, this one here 335 over 2 in radius, this one 225 over 2 in radius, and this one the same deal. Cool. All right, and for good measure, because they're not being used to make geometry, we'll go ahead and make them construction. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead, we're going to put in some dimensions so that they're fixed in some kind of verticality. We'll come along and we'll say that this one is 52.5. This one here is 122. Uh, this one here is 380 from the top. Good stuff. And this one here is 500 from the bottom. Cool, good, okay. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to make a vertical line here. And this is going to represent this flat section of our arm. So we'll come along here. In fact, we might just do a rough outline to begin with. We'll come along and we'll make a arc and make it tangential, looking good. Then another line here that comes down. Then another line that comes down like this. And then something like this comes down like that. Ooh, very nice, very nice. This is going to probably represent too much. This is actually the lower leg. I will come back to that later. All right, so let's go ahead and we are going to put in some dimensions. We'll say that that point there is five mil from the top. This line here, uh, the top of this circle here happens to be uh, equivalent to the height of the brazier. So we'll make a horizontal constraint there. Looking good, looking good. Um, we'll put in a outer radius, which happens to be 202.5. Put in a tangential constraint there. Make that one vertical so it doesn't betray us again. Here we go, looking good, looking good. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And that then there happens to be surely more than that. No, not 27. In fact, not any of those. Okay. We'll come along here and we'll specify that as 6.5. Yep, yeah, looking good. One, one, two. This line here happens to be eh. One, one, one point five. And here we go. Wonderful. Okay, so, so far what this represents is our arm. And by drawing a construction line representat uh, representing the uh, the brazier, we can see that it's following the, the pattern that it should. So here we go, if the thickness goes in this direction, um, it goes uh, from the outside of that band there, and it goes on the inside of the band there, and so forth, and so forth. Looking good, looking good. Okay, looking good. I think that's most of it. How are we unconstrained here? All oh, right, the vertical. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll say that that's 68 millimeters from there. Cool. Okay, so this is going to represent our arm. We'll come along here and we'll come to sheet metal defaults as before and use the thickness from rule, untick, change the thickness to 1.5 and the material to steel, comma, mild. Come along here to contour flange, grab our profile, and make it 27 millimeters in both directions. Looking good, looking good. Okay, now one of the advantages of having a sketch that represents our overall brazier is we can make it visible again and use it to guide the placement of holes. So we'll come along here, create a sketch on the front, and we're going to use our project geometry to grab, oops, not that guy, this guy here the curve representing the profile of the band. And there we know that the hole is in the middle of the band, so we can place a point in the middle of that projection and the hole should be in place. We'll repeat the process for the other holes. Come along here, right, project geometry, choose the band, there we go. Place a point in the middle and repeat. Here we go, 2D along here, project in the middle, 2D, there we go, lovely, cool. All right, so I'll hide that sketch for clarity, and here we're going to use the hole feature 
to make four millimeter holes through each one of these bits. So choose that point there, and then this rear surface here. Hit the plus, and choose the next point, and this rear surface here, and then the plus, and then this last point here, and this rear surface here. Looking good, looking good. There's only one flaw with it. Um, these sharp edges at the bottom are a bit of a health hazard, so what we're gonna do is round them off, take the edge off if you will, come to corner round, make it two mil radius, and we'll pick our corners. One, two, three, four. Now it is too smooth and wobbly to be of any danger to anybody. Beautiful. Okay, we'll go ahead and we're gonna call that uh, arm one. Good, good, okay. So let's go ahead, we'll close that. And we're going to, well, I guess, produce our own assembly now. So we'll go ahead and say new standard millimeter assembly. Here, let's go ahead and we'll place down our first band. And I'm gonna cheat. We're gonna go ahead and say, right click and say, place grounded at origin. Wonderful. Okay, to be quick, I'm going to place down all the other bands collectively. And I'm going to use an axial constraint to make them all axially aligned with one another. But this isn't going to be the end of the story because there's uh, the direction that they're in matters and I'll explain why shortly. So these bands, while they're all the same, so, uh, all the same um, design in a way, their direction matters because their holes have to line up with the arm that's going through them. Now there's a couple of ways that you could um, get them to line up. The laziest way would probably be to use a um, a coincident constraint between these gap walls. But I'll show you another way that's interesting. So say that we've got our uh, band at the top. It's grounded to the origin. If we expand them out, we can come along, find folded model, origin, and we can turn on the, uh, the YZ uh, origin plane. This is good. So what we can do then is find band two, find its origin plane, and we don't need to, but we can make them visible and then use our constraints with these planes. So I'll make that plane coincident, uh, flush with that plane. Now I'll show you an even neater trick. You can do it even when they're invisible. So here I'll expand out band three, come to origin, and then come along here and say constraint, flush constraint, YZ plane with YZ plane, and repeat it with band four. YZ plane with YZ. Beautiful. So now they're all in the same direction. They're, the gap is all in a line and all their holes are aligned as well. Excellent. So we'll save that and we'll call it Brazier. Okay. Next, we'll come along and we're going to place down our arm. So we'll say place arm one. Beautiful. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to place this arm so that it's aligned to that front hole here. So to do that, we'll come along here and create an axial constraint using that hole there. Lovely, and we can change its direction. Now we just need to fix its angle and also make it tangential. So we'll come along here and we'll add in a tangential constraint between the inner face here and the outer face there. Lovely, good. Next, what we can do is fix its angle by making a directed angle constraint between that face there and this face here. Good, now it's fixed in place. All right, now we can already spot a flaw. I must have miscalculated when it came to the uh, the size of the bands or the, the position of this one. So what we're going to do is edit the profile so that this arm is sitting, uh, is it on the inside or outside? It's on the inside of these bands. So we'll come along and we're going to open our arm one and edit the profile. Great. Okay, now we can see that this band here is 111.5. Let's go ahead and make it 110 and see how it goes. And for this one here, we can see it's, we'll make it 165. Finish sketch. Imperceptible difference, but in reality, now there is a gap and they can actually overlap. Very good, very good. Oh, good. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll use axial constraints to line them up. Good, good, excellent. Lovely, good. Okay, so we've got our first arm. Now, 
I'm way, way too tired to go ahead and repeat it, you know, 15 more times. So what we're going to do is use a pattern. And that's right, it's a pattern at the feature level. No, at the uh, assembly level, we're making pattern of a part. Wonderful. So we'll come along here and say pattern. And for the component, we'll choose the arm. And for the pattern, we'll choose circular. And using the red cursor, choose a circular reference. Now, we want to make 16 uh, components. And you might notice that nothing changes. That's because the period is 90 degrees. We need to actually change that to 22.5 degrees, which is um, 16 into 360. So there we go. Looking good. Looking beautiful. Excellent. OK, so now let's go ahead and revisit the original brazier. I happen to have taken a wonderful photo here. Uh, here we go. Lovely. So we can see that these lower legs come down from the outside and then come down to the outside of this band here and finish off there. So we'll come along and we're going to make a duplicate of arm one. So we'll say file, save as arm two. You might say, why are we making a duplicate? They're nothing alike. Well, we're going to piggyback on a lot of it. We can get rid of these corner rounds and these holes because they're going to blow up. Same with these sketches. But we'll come along here to sketch one. Beautiful. And I'm going to grab all of this and make a construction because we're not going to make that again. But what we will make is something beautiful. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a line that will come down vertically here, add an angle here, and like that. And we'll add in our constraints and dimensions very shortly. So there we go. Lovely. Good. OK, so I'm going to make that bottom point horizontally in line with the origin. Excellent. And make it 202.5 degrees in diameter. And here we go. Now it's sitting on the outside of the band, so it should be in line, I believe. Yep, like that. And same deal here. Beautiful. Now here we'll go ahead and add in some constraints because fully constrained is good. Let's say that's five mil and that's uh ooh. let's say that is 120 degrees good 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 okay all right i think that's all we need uh hopefully excellent okay so we'll say finish and it's picked up on that new new contour and as before we'll turn on our uh master sketch and come along here and make sketch points representing our center points. So we'll project the um, band and in the middle place a point. And here we'll project a band and oops, <laughs> the wrong plane again. We'll say finish sketch and make a new sketch on this plane here. And once again, we'll go ahead and project geometry, choose that and place a center point there. Finish sketch. Good. Okay. Come along here and we'll make a whole feature on that point going to that rear surface there, hit the plus. Yes, yes, excellent. At that point there, rear surface. Good, 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 good. All right, hide the sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, just uh, corner rounds so that no one cuts themselves on the edges of the feet. Beautiful, okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Go ahead, save that. And we're gonna place down our four feet so we'll come along here and we'll say arm um, one, no, arm um, two, I should say. And this time we'll go ahead and we'll do an axial alignment with the front. Uh, there we go, lovely. And click apply. Excellent. And again, we will use our angular constraint to place, uh, to make that um, parallel there. And here we go, we're going to use an axial constraint to place down the lower band. Now, the moment of truth, did it actually work out in terms of size? Let's find out. We'll say tangential. Uh, we'll say make the arm tangential there. Oh, we are math magicians. That was beautiful. OK, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to pattern it around just four times. So we'll come along here and we'll say pattern, grab our lower arm, circular, Choose the lower band, four, and with a period of 90, looking good, looking good, wonderful. Okay, 
So that's our brazier. Um, we have a few more elements that we actually have to throw in. So in our reference model, what we've got here is an ash pen. And we've also got these uh, circular, <laughs> circular round bars, uh, round bars, which are just going to be the grill at the bottom. So we're going to see how to do that. The pan, easy as pie. Let's go ahead. We're going to quickly make a pan. Uh, we're going to just make a standard millimeter pan. Come along here. And this time we'll make a rectangular profile. So this is going to represent the lower legs. So we'll say for uh, 202.5. That was the diameter. No, radius, I mean. Good. And, and we're going to make a pan that happens to fit this bill. Lovely. Now I'm lazy. We're going to use an offset unless it doesn't work. Ah, there we go. An offset. And we're going to make it like the rest of it, 1.5 millimeters. And we'll cap it off and do this just as a regular revolve. I know, I know. In fact, we might make it just a little bit nicer. We'll come along and we'll add in a fillet. So we'll come along uh, at the sketch level. I don't usually like to add sketch level fillets, but here we go. Make a fillet there, three mil there. Lovely. And we'll come along here and revolve it around this central axis. Good. Okay, great. So we'll come along and change the material to mild steel. Yes, good. Okay, save. And we'll call it ash pan. And we're going to place it into our assembly. And to do that, all we'll need to do is add in some constraints. Excellent. Ooh, maybe our pan is too small. It is too small. Maybe the legs are too wide, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and modify our ash pan. So to do it in the context of the assembly, it's going to be easy. All we need to do is double click it. Here we can come to revolution one, edit sketch one. And here we can increase its inner diameter. So we might say, uh, ooh, let's go ahead and make it 210 so that it sits nice and comfortably inside. Oh, it was never connected to it. Very good. Okay, we'll go ahead and we will use the coincident constraints to connect it up and make it like so. And we never actually specified a height. Oh, this is poor modeling, poor modeling. Go ahead and make it four millimeters and that is vertically aligned with there. Looking much better, much better. Excellent. There's our ash pan, looking good. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the last bit, which are the grill bars here. Now, one interesting thing about these grill bars is that um, they're ready for welding, which means that uh, they're not allowed to intersect that band at all. So how can we actually do that? There's a little bit of a trick to it. And remember, if you know how to be efficient, then it's uh, probably a lazy way of doing it. So we'll come along and we'll measure the inside of this uh, band here. And we'll say, okay, cool, that is uh, 225 mil inside. Looking good. So let's go ahead. We're going to make a single part that's going to be used to create all of those uh, bars. So we're going to draw a circle first. And what this circle is going to represent is our, um, is the inner diameter of the band. Now, essentially, Looking at it from the top view, what we've got are a bunch of um, rectangles. That's what a, the profile of a circular hollow section looks like from above. Now, we know that they're six mil. And what we want to do is we want to make it so that they happen to be equally spaced with one another, but also happen to fit within the circle. So I've done it this way for reasons that you will soon come to appreciate. I've drawn a rectangle and on the inside, a solid line. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the middle there and I'm going to connect the corner of this construction line to the edge of that circle. Now that's good because when we come to making the circular profile, it'll follow this path, but it will stop there. It'll become a little bit more obvious when we make the other um, profiles, you'll see. So I'll just quickly whack this together. Uh, go ahead, this time use coincident constraints to connect it to the middle, make that six millimeter in diameter and make this construction line beautiful and come along here 
and connect that corner there to this corner here. Lovely. And one last time, again, super lazy. Go ahead, draw a rectangle, bisect it with a line, make the rectangle construction, rectangle six mil wide. And here we can go add a coincident constraint between the corner point there and the edge. Now here, we are free to resize those bars. Now, I don't ignore exactly how uh, wide they are to be. In fact, I do, I think it's like 32. Why do I know this stuff? Here we go, <laughs> 32 millimeters distance between them, 32. Okay, cool, lovely. All right, so what we're going to do uh, is what we've drawn are the paths for sweeps that we're going to be using to make those circular hollow sections. So what we're going to do is here, is here come to plane and choose plane normal to curve at a point. Pick that central line, pick that point there, and now we can draw the cross section of the bar. So we'll say a six mil. And behold, we'll come along and say sweep and using this line as the path. And that's okay, it's made the sketch invisible, but we'll just make it visible again. And repeat the process for the other ones. We'll come along here and we'll say normal to curve at a point. There we go. And again, normal to curve at a point. There we go. And draw the other profiles. Six mil. And this time we're gonna to have to use a coincident constraint because we're not dealing with the origin anymore. And that's okay, we'll project the geometry and use a coincident constraint with that circle there. Lovely. Cool, and repeat, sweep, line, okay. And come along to this last one again, project the geometry, draw a profile. Oh yeah, finish and sweep. Excellent, excellent, okay, cool. So why do we do it this way? Um, one, it's easy to keep it within the circle's limits. And uh, two, we can just disable the features that we don't need for the various um, uh, bars. So we'll come along, we'll change the material to mild steel, looking good. And we're going to come along and we're going to make one change before we, we do anything else. All right, so I'm going to make this, actually, no, we'll run into the problem first and then we'll come up with a solution, I'll show you. Okay, so we're going, no, because then we have to make multiple copies of it. Yeah, thinking ahead always pays off. All right, for reasons that will become very, very obvious, what we're going to do is we are going to make a plane that happens to be at a slight angle. So we'll come along here, a uh, plane around an edge. Here we go. And we're going to say again, 22.5 over two. And that plane is going to be very useful to us later down the track, you'll see. Okay, cool. So, um, looking good, looking good. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to to hide those planes. Um, we're going to hide these sweeps. Well, we're going to suppress them so they're not going to be computed at all. So that is bar one, grill bar one. And then I'm going to suppress that one and unsuppress the next one. Save as, we'll call this grill bar two. And we'll suppress that one and unsuppress sweep three. File, save as, grill, bar three. Cool, okay. And for anyone asking, yeah, you could use the frame generator to do this. It's actually one of the approaches, but this is a cool way to. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place down grill bar one. Okay, now you'll find that because it's a cylinder, trying to constrain it up normally is actually going to be a real pain. So what we're going to do is use a trick. We're going to use the planes like we did earlier. So we're going to turn on the planes of band three and the planes of, here we go, yeah, of our bar. So here we'll come along and we'll make a flush constraint between the ground plane, so in this case it's the XZ plane of the bar and the XZ plane of the beam. So that's the first step. Next, we're going to grab the origin axis. So we'll grab the Y axis and make it mated with the Y axis. And now you'll find that it can spin right round. Um, and lastly, what we're going to do um, is that we'll find that if we 
come along and did as we did before and make a flush constraint between the YZ plane and the YZ plane here, it's going to actually impinge on these arms here, which isn't helpful. So this is where that new plane that we created is going to come in handy, work plane four. We'll come along here and make a flush constraint between work plane four and the um, ch -ch 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 the X, oh, sorry, the uh, YZ plane, I believe it's the YZ plane. Yeah, the YZ plane of that bar. And you'll find that it's smack bang in the middle. Oh, gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, excellent, good. Okay, so um, just so that it's not uh, impinging on that gap, which is probably fine for a weld, we'll go ahead instead and use the XY plane with work plane for. And we'll find, yep, beautiful, perfect. Okay, now fast as lightning, we're gonna do the other bars as well using the same technique. That's right. Okay, so we'll minimize that, expand out the origin of grill bar two, come along and make the ground planes flush with one another and make the XY plane flush with work plane four and the Y axis mated with the Y axis there. Oh, already in place. Beautiful. Again, again, place. And we'll come along here and we'll find bar three and repeat the process. Chook, 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 chook. Origin. Mate the origins together, the y-axis, good. Come along and we'll choose the x, y plane of the band and the plane four of the bar. Oh, such beauty, it brings me to tears, it's perfect. Okay, cool, we'll finish up the remaining bars. Then we'll come along here. Hmm, is there a lazier way of doing it? Maybe, maybe, just copy and paste them. It'll create two new instances of it. Um, and let's go ahead and expand out grill bar to the second instance. Sounds like a movie. Grill bar to the second instance. Make a flush constraint between the ground here. There probably is a lazy way of doing it. The fact that I'm doing it the slow way breaks my heart. Uh, we'll make the Y axis there, Y axis there. And we'll come along here. And this time we're going to change it from a, uh, make a mate constraint rather than a flush constraint between plane four and the X, Y plane. Oh, lovely, great. The fact that you don't even have to clean, click the graphical windows, very, very quick. Okay, you can come along here and uh, make a coincident, con uh, a flush constraint between the X, Z planes, X, Z planes, good. Mate the Y axes, yep. And finally, make a mate constraint between what, plane four and the XY plane here. Oh, and we're done. It's a thing of great beauty, friends. I'm gonna go ahead and save that before you, and I'll show you very quickly. If we come along here to the bill of materials, here we've got a parts only bill of materials showing the quantity of each of the components that you're going to need. Oh, beautiful, okay. I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you learned something useful during this time. Um, I really appreciate you watching these videos and making them was a lot of fun. So I'll see you next video. Have a great week and see you next time. Bye.